God bless you, Facebook and YouTube. How you doing? This is Apostle Robert Jenkins. It's a Monday morning, 6 a.m. Central Standard Time, 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. God bless everybody. Welcome to Divine Insight Ministries. If this is your first time, we are a church without walls, and we are out of New Orleans. But God bless everybody, and as always, me and my wife like to take out the time to say thank you. We appreciate you. Hope everybody had a great weekend. Good morning, Sister Rita. Good morning, Brother Clarence. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Let me grab my other glasses. Good morning, good morning. All right, that's a whole lot better. So God bless you, Brother Brian, Sister Tiffany. God bless everybody. God bless you. Welcome, welcome, Brother Michael. Man, how you doing? God bless you. Tell your fiance we say hello. So God bless everybody. Sister Walker, God bless you, my daughter. God bless you. Brian, we, we, we didn't get a chance to talk last week. We'll make sure we do that this week. But God bless you. Go ahead, hit that share button. Sister Jan, good morning. Hit that share button. Share this on your page. Also, if God leads you out, please do a watch party. Good see your cousin. It was good talking to you. A watch party blesses us so much. It even helps even more. Uh, you can contact more people when you do a watch party. So if the Lord leads on your heart, good to see you. Pastor Peterson out of Buffalo, New York. God bless you, great man of God. God bless you. Go ahead and hit that share button. Share this on your page. Invite people out and also do a watch party if the Lord lays on your heart. It'll be a blessing to us. Uh, please take heed to all the announcements. We have a new video out. Please watch that on YouTube or it's on my page as well. Uh, I did load up one video yesterday, but I, I'm so behind on video. So give me a couple days and I'll catch up on the, on the YouTube page. I think I'm behind maybe four videos I have to load up. But God bless everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Let's get ready to go into prayer. And today, we're still talking about the evidence or... Um, the values of the kingdom system, the value systems of the kingdom. But I, I want we've been talking about grace, we've been talking about mercy, we've been talking about compassion. Now we're talking about healing. And uh, this may be the last week for healing. We'll see what the Lord say. But I want to, I, I subtitle the evidence of your healing, the evidence of your healing. How do you know when you're healed of something? So we're going to begin to talk about those things. And God has really been giving me major revelation of healing. I did not realize how much he was teaching me about healing and how deep the revelation go until the last couple of days. And it doesn't surprise me because I have been hurt uh, by so many areas in my life and God has shown me how not to see it as hurt. My perception of pain must change. When you walk in the promises of God, you can't see things the same. And many times you're not free from something because your eyesight still see it the same. The way you saw it cannot be the way you see it. The way you saw it cannot be the way you see it. Um, the devil was able to, and I got to pray, but the devil was able to deceive Eve by the way she saw the tree. She should have never saw something that God told her that was wrong. She should have never saw it, watch this, as a knowledge of good and evil to bring her wise. Her wisdom should not have came from external. It should not have came from disobedience. And this is a trick uh, that the devil is doing with a lot of people that you're not changing your perception of how you see things once you've become healed. And so what happens is the devil is able to bring up the pain of that experience based upon the memory Okay, based upon the memory. And so this is so important. You know, God has been talking to me in the last couple of days, and I'm teaching already. Uh, he's been t talking to me in the last couple of days. Why is it important for me to know that he remembers my sins no more? Why is it important for, for God to tell us that he remembers our sins no more? Because God never, in a sense, forget as if he's all-knowing. He's all He always knows. But but he telling us that is so the power that we can let it go and remember it no more. I'm learning that a lot of sicknesses remain in your body. You're still struggling, even though you believe God to be healed. Why are you still struggling with sugar diabetes or whatever the case may be? A lot of times the sickness still remains because the memory, watch this, of where you were wounded mentally and spiritually shows up in your body. It hides behind the memory. The sickness itself hides behind the memory. And so a lot of times, because you, the memory is still there, and how do you know it when you talk about it? Do you go back to that place and see it the same? And so I'm learning the sickness. God's been teaching me about, I, I have been given the gift of healing. 
And then they're teaching me how to help people get delivered. It's not just the laying on the hands and I, and I declare you healed, but it's telling you, you got to forget it. You literally got to give it to God. You got to give it to God because this is why every time you tell it, there's a relapse. I couldn't figure out whenever I would talk about my dad, I would get mad again. I would get mad again. It's 30 years ago. It's 40 years ago. I would get mad again. It took me years to be able to tell that story and not get mad because I never let it go in my memory. Yes, I forgave him, but the memory of it. And what happens is when, 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 when pain hides in your memory, it begins to express itself through your physical body. So why am I still having it? I was, I've been listening to these teachings and this ladies was talking about how they had back pain for years, back pain for years. And they, and they thought the back pain was due to a car accident, but the back pain, watch this was really a trigger from the car accident, but there's some things that really caused them pain earlier in their life. And so what happens is, and I'll talk about this, the devil is looking for doors to express where he is. He's looking for open doors, open doors. This is why when you don't eat right, the devil says, I can show you where your depression is, but I'll show it in your body by you not eating right. I need a door. I need, the day you eat this, your eyes shall be open. You should be like God, knowing good and evil. But that word eyes there is the word fountain. He's always been looking for a fountain to deposit his words, his negativity in your spirit and so you can give birth to it. So a lot of times our healing is not just spiritually, it is mentally, it is emotionally, and it is physically, but the power of it, this is why I think Paul put so much emphasis on forgetting those things that are behind you and press towards the mark of the high calling. You gotta be able to, to erase it from your memory. Lot's wife turned it to a pure assault because she couldn't leave it. She looked back and lingered. God said, it's time to go. And so a lot of times you're not healed because you still linger in the place mentally, spiritually, and emotionally. Okay? So we'll talk about that. Father, we bless your name for this hour. You've already spoken, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Cover us in the name of Jesus. Give us clarity this morning on this word. God, we want to be healed. We don't want nothing hiding in our body, hiding in our minds, hiding in our soul so that we cannot walk in the full potential of your love and in the full potential of your light. We want to even see our enemies as you see our enemies, to love them, to bless them, to intercede for them, to fight for them. For we know we only have one enemy. I don't care what happened to us, God. We only have one enemy. And he's already been defeated. And we already have power over him. So let us focus on the goodness of who, what you have done and your perfect plan for imperfect people. And we thank you, Lord, that your mercy endures forever. You had compassion. You loved us because you've always had an original intent for our lives, which we call purpose. And we bless you for it. Holy Spirit, we're listening. Wisdom teach us this morning. Bless us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So. If you're just coming on, hit that share button and 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 and, and thank you for that. Do a watch party and, and be a blessing to others. Okay. And so I want to move into the evidence of healing. I've already started and God's been talking to me about it. I thank God for it. I, I, let me say this to you too. Um, it took me years to be healed. I, I, I was so wounded. I was afraid to say who I, who I am in God. Like I used to really hide behind the abuse the abuse of, of titles, like people would love to say, I'm chief apostle, I'm bishop, I'm pastor. I hated those titles. But the truth of the matter is that I could not declare those titles for my life when it was time, okay? Because there is abuse. But I was hiding behind the abuse of the title because I was wounded and I was afraid to say who I was. I didn't know how to, to celebrate myself and it not be too far. You know how people say, well, you know what? Be very careful with that confidence because you become arrogant. But why can't I be confident in who I am in God and not be arrogant? See, there is a measure and stick that you're not meeting up and you can hide behind the abuse of other people abusing that. But just because other people are abusing being a pastor, you shouldn't be afraid to say I'm a pastor. Just because other people are abusing motherhood, you shouldn't be able to, you shouldn't, that should not hinder you from saying, I am a good mother. 
You should be able to declare that. But make sure that you're not hiding behind the abuse. There are a lot of people that you're listening. You're supposed to be connected to a church. Yeah, you are supposed to be a connected to church, but you're hiding behind all the abuse that come in church that you're never letting God heal you from the abuse you experience it. So now you won't commit to no church. You won't commit to no ministry. You won't commit to no husband. No, you won't commit to no wife. You won't love nobody. And you, every time somebody say that to you, you remember the pain you experienced when you was in a marriage. Marriage is hard. When I was in the marriage, she just cheated on me. When I was in the marriage, he didn't respect me. He didn't pay no bills. He didn't love me. And so because of that, you are now hiding behind the pain of the memory. That's been 15, 20 years, 30 years ago, whatever the case may be. And you never has returned. You never let full rest restoration come to you. And you justify it by the abuse of it. Well, you know one out of every two marriages don't work. You know, church is just as messy as the world. And all those things are truth. But what is God saying to you? Why haven't you been healed since you've been hurt? Ask yourself a question. Why haven't you been healed since you've been hurt? And why, if you, if, and before you got hurt, you was in the game. Why are you not back in the game? If you're claiming healing, then I didn't say back in the game with that same person in that same church. But why are you not doing what you knew you was called to do before you got hurt? Why are you why you're not back doing that? And and and, and I'll say this: sometimes healing is not taking you back to where you were. Sometimes healing is taking you farther because before you got healed, you were already broken and didn't know it. You was working on a half a take of gas before the church hurt you, before your husband, uh, ex-husband left you, before your wife cheated on you, before your kids abandoned you, you wasn't at your full potential then. And so the devil uh, will trick you and having you using when you got hurt as a measuring stick for healing, when you have never walked in the fullness of God. You never walked in your full potential. You never went after God. You need healing from the last place of your success that you're using as a measuring stick and it is off because that's not what God has for you. He has so much more. What if you have never? It's like a it's like a it's like an alcoholic who says, "You know what? I thank God. I just want to get free from drinking. I want to go back to the time where drinking was not my drug." Well, you were messed up even when you weren't drinking. But all you want to do is not be able to drink. You just not want to be a, I just not want to be on drugs anymore. But your life was messed up before you got on drugs from the pain that happened in your childhood. Healing got to go deeper than the time watch this. That you can you can pinpoint it. Because sometimes we was messed up before we realized we was messed up. And sometimes the enemy wants us to focus on, focus on that we're naked and not focus on that we're not under glory. Adam put his emphasis on I was naked. He never put the emphasis on what he really lost. What you really lost was the access to God's glory. Not just nakedness, but the enemy tricks us in, in looking at the wrong evidence, the wrong evidence of, of bondage and the wrong evidence of success. All right. Am I making sense to you? OK, good morning, everybody. God bless you. Go ahead and hit that share button. Share this on your page. And remember, we're sowing where we're going. The evidence of healing. Point number one, healing brings you into a peace with God, self and others. Healing brings you into a peace with God, self, and others. I want you to hear that. If you're really healed, then the thing that hurt you is bringing you into a peace with that. Watch this. Not only the healing part, but a peace that I was wounded. See? There's so many layers to healing. When God first started healing me of my false perception of my dad, the truth of the matter is my dad didn't hurt me, my perception of what he did. There's some people's father who did exactly to them that my father did to them, and it never bothered them because they never took on that idea, that expectation from their father that I did. 
Okay, watch this. But when God began to heal me from my own false perceptions, if you haven't uh, purchased my book yet, please get my book on Barnes and Nobles. It's on Amazon called The Journey of False Perceptions. If you really want to know about healing and how God can heal you, that book will change your life. Um, and you probably need to get the second one too, 33 Confessions, because you really need to make some confessions about who you are in God. So get them both, okay? But when God began to heal me of that, one of the things he began to heal me of, okay, I've healed you of the wound, but do you have peace that he wounded you? Do you have peace with that he wasn't there? Do you have peace with all the stories that you told? I used to tell all these stories. I was playing for James Cleveland, and it was 10,000 people, and my dad wasn't in the audience. Do you have peace with that? Do you have peace when I tell the story how my mother had one hand and my father had the other and they was pulling me back and forth and I didn't know who to go with, with my dad or with my mom? Okay, do you have peace with that? All those memories that you used to tell that made you cry, that made you upset, that made you angry, that justified that your dad was a terrible dad. All the things you did, you marked his name. All the things you did, do you have peace with them now? Because when healing come, you should have peace with the scar. You should have peace with it because now you see it through the lens of light and the lens of love that gives you peace with it. Because there's some friends who hurt me and I can walk up to them today and laugh with them and talk with them. And guess what? And I don't have any animosity against them. And guess what? And when I tell the story, we laugh about what he did. It's funny to us. It's a joke now because I really have peace about it. There's some things that have happened to you in your life and you got peace about them. How do we know? Because now, now when you tell what mama did to you, you and the kids, y'all all laugh together. Remember that time mama beat us like we was uh, half dead? The other day my wife and her sons was talking about how when she used to punish them and she would make them be on rice and they was just laughing about the rice being in their knees and we get up and the rice being because there was peace about that particular discipline. But we don't see the chastisement that we go through in life that is God bringing us to a place and correcting us. And so the question would be, well, how do you know that you really healed when you have peace about something that at one time brought you tears? Oh, God, I feel the Holy Ghost this morning. There's a story about a man that was in church and he would, uh, uh, he would always, you know, he was wounded. He had crutches and things like that. And, um, he came to the altar at one revival and, um, and uh, he got healed of his of his problem. And so after a while, you know, he would thank God for his healing. And every Sunday he would give testimony. I thank God that I'm healed. Well, about three or four. Good to see you, champ. I tried to call you the other day, man. I know you're probably working now. Give me a call when you get free today. I'd love to talk to you. Um, but uh, as about three or four weeks went by after he gave this testimony that he was healed, that one of the young men at the church walked up to him and said, why are you always saying you're healed? You always saying you're healed, but every time you walk up to the to the to the altar to tell your story, you're limping. He said, You're limping. Why 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 you say you heal, but you still have a limp? And the old man said, I may be limping, but the pain is gone. I know I'm healed because I may be limping, but the pain is gone. When you one of the signs of healing is when you have peace. About the limp. Woo! You better hear that in the Holy Ghost. When you got peace about the limp, I cannot change what happened to me, but I got peace about the limp. I may be limping, but when I see my dad, when you see your ex-wife, when you see your ex-husband, when you see your boss who fired you, when you go through life, when you see your pastor, when you see the bishop, when you see all the things, even when you see the rapist, one, one of the most powerful shows I've ever watched on Oprah, I don't always agree with everything that she that comes on her show, but one of the powerful things, she had a young lady on there that had been raped by the guy and they had her on there and the rapist and she looked him in the eyes and said I love you and I mean it was sincere because God had healed her and gave her peace that she can sit next to him look him in the eye and say I love you because she got a revelation that you have a problem. I didn't have a problem because you raped me. You had a problem that you think you needed to rape me. And I'm more concerned now that I'm healed. I got peace. And now I can be a mister, an instrument of healing to you because I have peace with that situation. I can love my husband. I declare over your life right now that the peace of God, the passive understanding, watch this, shall come over you. Okay? 
Woo! Very key. Very key. That the peace of God come over you. Why? Because many of you, you having marital problems because you didn't have peace in that matter. And somehow your husband can't touch you in certain places. Your, your husband can't speak to you in certain places. But you're not going to continue to go to church. You're not going to continue to listen to uh, um, Apostle Robert Jenkins and Divine Insight Ministries and not get healed. It's time for you to get healed. Your children need you to hug them. Your son needs you to call him. Your daddy need to hear your voice. Mama need to know she's been forgiven. You got to get the peace of God so you can have evidence of the healing. So you can begin to finish the journey of why God put y'all together. Why there's a perfect plan for your life. And I declare you shall not go through life being timid. Can't nobody touch you in that area. Can't nobody talk to you in that area because you have no peace. I got peace about it. And we're going to laugh about the thing that at one time separated us. But now it's going to bring us together and we're going to have a wonderful conversation, we be able to drink some tea, eat some donuts, and laugh about it because we have the peace of God. When the peace of God comes, it brings you to a place that you're okay with you. You're okay with the scars. You're okay with the lipping because the pain is gone. Healing brings you to a place of peace with God because I know now because when, when you get wounded, the first thing the devil wants that wound to do, he wants that wound to talk to you to tell you that God doesn't love you. Then why, why, why would God let this happen to me? And you start feeling as if you have no worth. As if you have no worth because of this, because of that. You're marked by the experience. Don't let the experience, the experience will mark you, mark you, M-A-R-K, but it does not identify you. You are not what you, you are not what you experience. You are not what you experience. You are not what you experience. You happen to be raped, but you are not that raped person. Do not become a victim of the experience by the identity. You can't change the experiences. And we're not desensitizing the pain. We're giving you medicine for the pain. So the powerful woman of God, the powerful man of God that you are, even in the experience, get up and finish Finish being whole. Finish your, your obligation, your responsibility as a powerful man of God. Get up and do it because you can do it. And many has overcome the very thing you're still crying about. And you've been given the power to become an overcomer. You've been given that. But you got to have peace with God. Not go through life blaming God and mad at God. I rebuke and I renounce every spirit, every mindset that you've been holding a grudge against God because of what happened to you. You've been holding the grudge. That's why you don't want to go to church. Matter of fact, you didn't even want to hear this teaching today, but God drew you here and you couldn't cut it off because your healing time has come. You can't go through life. You're bitter with God. I know you don't, you don't say you're, you're not bitter with God, but you are. That's why you're doing certain things. That's why you're not doing something. Why are you not back on the praise team? Why are you not back studying? Because you're mad at God. Why are you not back in a relationship a healthy one? Because you're mad at God. Why are you not giving it all that you have because you're mad at God. But the day we release the spirit of peace, peace be upon you so that you can be able to know that your re restoration with God is being restored. God has never left you. He's by you. He's going to give you understanding of that. He's going to show you the power that you have. But you got to believe. You got to accept that he loves you. Yes, okay. You got to have peace with God. Peace with self. And peace with others. Good to see you, cousin. Love you with all that I have. So proud of you and your husband. Peace, the peace of God. The peace of God. You got to have the peace of God. You got to know that in your experience, there was a peace of God that sustains you. Not only a peace of God, but a peace of God. The measure of God. I got some God in me that will sustain this, this situation. Not just the P-E-A-C-E, -E, but the P-I-E. There's a piece of God. There's a measure of faith that when the suffering of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed, all things work together for the good. I know that the peace of God, only when you talk to people who've been healed just like you, how did you have a smile on your face? How did you keep raising your boys when he walked out on you? Because the peace of God will walk you through it. And you'll be able to feed the very person that left you. You'll be able to help them.
Oh, God is raising up a, a, a people in the kingdom that we're going to have ex, ex-wives and ex-husbands working together in ministry because of the peace of God. And for somebody, you right, you're close to the thing that hurts you right now. And this message is for you. For you, because you feel the peace of God, but, but your flesh is trying to fight against it because it keeps wanting to remind you of what you've been through. Don't trust him. Don't trust her. No, don't let nobody stop you from being who God called you to be. I got the peace of God that I can get all of my mind back and all of my soul back and all of my joy back. I dare give my joy over to experience. You don't deserve the right to keep my peace. You better speak to that problem. Give me back my peace. I declare I call it back. I call it back. You going to let that experience take your peace? That belongs to you. That's your right. Get your birthright back. Woo! I've been born to live in this level of peace. Okay, it brings you into a peace with God and with self and with others. Let's go through some scriptures so we can get the revelation here, right? Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. Lord, I thank you for your spirit today. I thank you for healing as we speak and as you moved upon us. Cut us loose from everything that has held us back from the full potential of who you are in us. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We thank you for it. Love you, Brother John. I'm going to have to call you, man. <clears throat> it's time for me and you to start having some talks at least once a week. I love you. Matthew chapter 5, verse 9 says, Blessed are the peacemakers, not peacekeepers, but keep peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. God is calling you to a healing place so that you can know how to make peace. The revelation that God gave me to be healed of wounds is, is so powerful in the kingdom because it is a call for the sons. I'm going to do a ministry on what you've been called to as a son. Sons, is there many scriptures, those who are led by the spirit shall be called the sons of God. So the sons of God, watch this, they know how to be led by the spirit. Sons of God are peacemakers. When you walk into sonship, you're going to walk into peace. You're going to know how to bring peace between marriages, peace between families. It's a powerful virtue that you have. You have the revelation of it, the system of it, the, the ministry of it, the, the strategy of it. Okay? And so bless all the peacemakers for they are the sons of God. You're the sons of God because you know how to bring things back to where how God wanted to be. You don't let any experience separate the power of the purpose. There's purpose. Listen to me. I'm talking to you, woman of God. You got your sons have purpose, but the devil don't want you and your sons to ever have peace. For you to tell your sons who they are. There is some God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Listen, listen. The purpose of the one of the purpose of the prophetic, the when you are prophetic, you are a curse breaker. You break curses off your life. Yesterday, me and my wife was talking. We spent a great time. I wish we could have videotaped yesterday's conversation. But we talked about how you have to prophesy to your kids. My wife says you have to prophesy to your kids before you send them to school. And so when they know who they are for the prophecy that you told them in the home, when they go into the world, when they go into the school, they go in with a prophetic word. Many times we have released people in our lives, your sons and your daughters, but you never got a chance to prophesy to them. You didn't put a word word all over their life as the mother, as the father, to prophesy to them. And so what happens is they are in a world uncovered by a word. But when you have a word over your life, ain't but so much you can get into because the word is over your life. And so what happens is the devil don't want you. So he tries to come in between you and your sons before you got a chance to prophesy to him. He don't want you to have a word over them that breaks the curse that may have come from their father lineage, may have come from some other things that are that are attacking them, but because that, so you can be very careful when you don't have peace with people, because when you don't have peace with people, the devil says good, because that way you won't speak what you need to speak into their lives, but when you are prophetic, you know, when you are a son of God, when you are mature, you know, I'm, I'm keeping this peace, not just because we play basketball together, not because we both make money, but I'm keeping this peace, because there's a word in my mouth that you need, there's a word 
word in your mouth that I need every joint supply. And I got to be a peacemaker so that what? I can be called the sons of God. That's who I am. When you walk in maturity, you bring things together to see the real revelation of the, of the, of the connection. This is why you are my son. This is why God chose me to be your mama. God chose me to be your daddy. I know it. And when you know that, when you walk as a son of God, you try to bring peace. And God says, follow men with peace. What's this? With holiness without no man to see the Lord. We've been preaching holiness, but we haven't been preaching peace. He said, follow all men with peace. You got to follow all men with peace and holiness. Without you will never see God in the relationship. You don't see God in the problem because you're not trying to become a peacemaker. But when you mature, bless all the peacemakers. How happy, the word bless, how happy, watch this, all the peacemakers. They shall be called the sons of God and me because you understand. Now watch this, you've been through too much in your life and God restore you to believe in what the devil said about them. Quit believing the, uh, the lies. The devil said they no good. They lazy. They terrible. Uh, they, 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 they gay. They, they're lesbian. No, no, no. I see them through the eyes of God. I see them through the lens of God. And because I have the real revelation, because I know how God saw me, God used me when I was in some sins, when I was stubborn, when I was unconsistent, uncon uh, when I was unfaithful, he still saw what he put in me. How can God see my purpose in my problems and I can't see their problems in their purpose? Or their purpose in their problem. No, I'm a peacemaker. I'm about to bring you back together because I know what it is to have a calling. But because you have no peace, you can't do it. You can't sing because you don't have no peace. You can't preach because you don't have no peace. You're trying to love, but you don't have no peace. But here comes the peacemakers. The peacemakers, the overcomers, those who have grown in God. Woo! That's it. They bring order into a chaos relationship. They bring order into a, a so-called failure. They bring the light into a dark place. The peacemakers bring purpose back to a, a, a confused mind. It wakes you up to what he said before you fail. Woo! Ah, feel the Holy Ghost. Bless are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the son of God. Everybody say, I'm a son of God. I'm a child of God. But I can't tell because you keep making confusion. If you are a child of God, then you should be making peace in that home. Peace in that church. Peace on that job. Peace in that family. Because that's the sign. That's the evidence of a child of God. The evidence is the peace. Woo! God, I feel you. I feel you. Bless are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. This is how we handle adversity because I'm a peacemaker. So even if I don't agree with you, at the end of the day, I got to be a peacemaker because I'm a child of God, okay? The next verse I want to deal with is Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 through 30. Matthew chapter 11, you just coming on, hit that share button, start that watch party. Come on, we're sowing where we're going. Watch this, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 through 30. He says, come unto me, come unto me. One of the number one steps to healing is to get to God, to activate those 12 powers within you. And he called his 12, 12 disciples unto him. You got to call all the 12 powers that's in you unto God. The more you get with God, the more you see how God is in you. The more you get in God, the more you see how God is already in you. The more you get in it, you'll see what's in it. You'll see you in it. You'll see you in it. The more you get in it, you'll see you in it. When you're looking at God, you're looking at yourself. Uh-oh, you'll see the reflection of who you really are. Uh-oh, that you're made in the image and the likeness of God. Talk to me right now. Watch this. Come unto me. Who are all who labor? You've been laboring, fishing all night, been catching nothing. You've been laboring, trying to make the marriage work. You've been laboring, trying to get the money right. You've been laboring. All those who are laboring and are heavy laden. And because you've been laboring and you don't know how to flow in the spirit yet, you're heavy laden. It's weight on you. You're trying to figure it out. You can't figure it out. It's stressing you out. You can't 
sleep at night. You don't have no peace. Oh, it's messing you up. You have worry and anxiety. How I'm going to fix it. How I'm going to love her. All these things you're going through. But come unto me. Don't, don't wait until you get it together. Come to me when it ain't together. Come unto me all the your labor. Right now when you're laboring, you trying to work it out. You trying to figure it out. Don't wait till you get the good job. Come to me when you don't have it. Come to me. All the your labor and are heavy laden. You're heavy. You're heavy. You're burdened down. You're crying. You're broken. You can't find yourself. That's when you come. Come on. And I will give you rest. Yes. Woo! God. Yes. Healing. The evidence of healing is when you can rest in the storm. Not rest after the storm. God, I feel the Holy Ghost. You can rest in the storm. You can rest in the fiery furnace. You go to sleep with the lions. Come unto me. Right? In, because what happens when you come into me, I'm going to get where you are and show you how to sleep in the place. I'm going to get in the boat. I'm going to get in it and I'm going to show you how to go to sleep. Sleep. The bills are still not paid, but you're resting. Oh, the gas is still on E, but you're resting. Ain't no food in the cupboard, but you are resting. Oh, you still need the, your college funds to be paid, but you got rest because you came to him mentally, spiritually. He said, I will give you rest. Take my yoke. Now, it looked like that this is the wrong thing to give me, God. I'm telling you, I'm already heavy laden. I'm already tired. I'm already weary. Why would you give me a yoke? Because this ain't your normal yoke. I want to show you how to have a yoke that's easy. Ooh. Oh, I want to show you that when you take the yoke you're supposed to take, it, it doesn't bring you into laboring. It's an easy yoke. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Watch this. Watch this. Take my yoke upon me, upon you and learn of me. How do you learn? You learn from the easy yoke. The other scriptures talk about it's easy. We'll get to that point in a minute. Watch this. He says, and learn of me. There's a yoke that's going to teach you how to rest like Jesus rests in the boat during the storm. This yoke educates you to handle problems from a spiritual understanding. Oh, this learn of me. I want you to learn of me while you are heavy laden. I want you to learn of me. Watch this. While you are laboring, you I'm going to show you. Because see, you've been doing it, but you've been doing it with the wrong mindset. You haven't been learning of me. This, listen to me. That experience was supposed to teach you about me. Uh-oh, it wasn't supposed to make you focus on what happened to you. It was supposed to make you focus on what God already did for you. Oh, see, the devil wants you to focus on, they talked about me, they lied on me, they raped me. No, come and learn of me. It's something about me in that storm you need to see. There's something about me, and when you see me in the storm, you'll see me in your storm. You will learn of me. Follow me. Watch how I handle person. Execution. Watch how I handle adversity. Watch your daddy work. Your daddy went through the same thing you went through. He feels your infirmities. He knows the pain. They spit on me, but watch how I handle it. They stab me in the side, but watch how I handle it. They put me on the cross, but watch how I handle it. Come on. I ain't going to take you away from the storm. I'm going to show you you got power greater than the storm. I'm going to show you something. You're going to learn of me. Everybody that been through something, they learned something of God. I learned something of God. I learned that God is a resurrection. I learned the power of God. Paul said, let me come to know him and the fellowship of his suffering. Oh, there's some fellowship that comes in the suffering. Come learn of me so the next time you go through a problem, you start thanking God. You get excited. I'm about to learn something. When, listen, when now God has taught me when things get rough now, you know what I say? Oh, I can't wait to see how God get me out of this one. Woo! Ooh, he about to show me some. We've been here before. Uh-oh, uh-oh. I'm about to see another side to God. That's when you have learned. Oh, come learn. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart. Woo. So there is a spirit and a power in gentleness that wounds can't handle. Woo. I'm gentle. I'm lonely at heart. 
and you will find rest for your soul. Wait, 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 wait. I came to you heavy laden. If you're just coming on, we in Matthew chapter 11. I came to you heavy laden. I came to you weary. And you gave me a yoke. And you mean to tell me the yoke that you gave me. The yoke teaches me about you. See, you've been given a yoke to make you focus on you. But there's a yoke to make you focus on God. Oh, there's a yoke to make you focus on grace. There's a yoke that'll make you focus on power. There's a yoke that'll make you focus on peace. There's a yoke that'll make you focus on faith. Oh, he said, watch this. And you will find rest. What kind of yoke are you dealing with? Because a God yoke will give you rest. Have you ever known a yoke to make you sleep? He said, you'll find rest in this yoke. For, here it is, I told we get to it. For my yoke is easy. My yoke is easy. Now, my grandfather, he used to help me with this. He taught me that, you know, the, the older cow would yoke the younger cow, to train the younger cow how to, how to do the work. God says you're working, but you don't know how to do the work. You're going through the pain, but you don't know how to go through the pain. You're going through hell, but you don't know how to go through hell. I'm going to show you how to go through hell the right way. I'm going to show you how to be on the boat when it's full of water and go to sleep the right way. I'm going to show you how to handle adversities the right way. Woo! Watch this. He says, for my yoke is easy. Now, my grandfather said, the reason why it's easy, because the older cow is yoked to the younger cow, but the yoke, the older cow does the most work. He says, when you carry it too much, you got to learn how to shift to the other side. God is on the other side yoked to you saying you ain't going through this storm by yourself. You ain't going through this heartache by yourself. But the most of the weight is not on you. Your yoke is easy. He carrying the burden. Woo! Good to see you, cousin. Love you, man. Every time you come home, brother David Howard, money we call him. Powerful, powerful anointed man of God. Love you, man. Thank you. And so he says, my yoke is easy. God's yoke is easy. Yes, there's a yoke. Don't let nobody tell you no lie. Being saved, there's going to be some yokes. Being saved, you're going to have some mountains. Being saved, you're going to have some valleys. Being saved, you're going to have some adversity. Being saved, you're going to be talked about. But when you do it God's way with the peace of God, the passive understanding, it becomes easy because he carry most of the weight. Woo! Now watch this. Then it goes on to say, my burden, watch this. My burden, my burden, I want you to hear it. My burden is light. Watch this. My burden is light. Most of the time we interpret it as light as in weight. But this light is also spelled L-I-G-H-T. My burden is illumination. Let there be light. God is saying that when you are heavy laden and you come to God, he'll show you the revelation of your pain. God's yoke show you the revelation of your yoke. Now his yoke is a light. It, why did he give you light? So you can see how weak the devil is and what he tried. You get a revelation of everything you've been through. And so when you come to God, when you're going through, now you say, that's the devil. I see what he's trying to do. Uh oh, the light came on. Uh oh, how did you know how to deal with the devil in your trial? Because I went to God when I was heavy laden. I went to God when I was burdened down. And his yoke gave me a revelation about my my yoke. It gave me revelation about my divorce, how he was trying to kill me mentally. It gave me revelation about the pain in my body, how the devil tried to take me out. It gave me revelation when I took on God's yoke, I got a revelation about my yoke. Uh oh, so uh oh, I see now. Uh oh, it ain't that my daddy left me. The, the devil want me to feel like I, I'm not in love. I don't have a father. He wasn't in my life. I got the revelation. I got life concerning my burden. I'm still in a place, but I can see it for what it is now. It ain't gonna kill me. And once I get the revelation, 
of the pain, of the yoke from taking on God's yoke, then I can say, I thank you, Lord, for all things work together for the good to them who love the Lord, who are not called according to his purpose, who God called, he justified, who he justified, he sanctified, who he sanctified, who can say to these things, can anything be against the elect of God? Nothing shall separate me from the love of God. Then I can walk through the scriptures that the summit of the this present time is not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed. Why? Because when I went to God, he gave me light in his yoke about the trouble that was in my yoke. In my yoke, I couldn't see no light. It was dark in my yoke. It was confusing in my yoke. But when I took on his yoke, his yoke exposed everything. It took it took the, the sting out of death. Old gray, where's your victory? Why? Because when I went to God, his yoke revealed the weakness of my yoke. Yes, Lord. It ain't that bad. The devil ain't that strong. But I couldn't see it until I went to him. Woo! <laughs> oh, man, I'm losing my voice. Oh, I said, ha! Mmm. Come on, come unto me, who all who labor and heavy laden. God wants to give you rest. He wants to give you evidence of your healing when you rest in a storm. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. This story that you went through was to teach you to learn of me. Don't you go to hell and don't come out with no keys. You, every hell experience you come out, you better come out with the authority to expose it. Woo! For I am gentle and lonely in heart. You will find rest for your soul, for your psyche, for your emotions, for your intellect. For my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Watch this. John chapter 14, verse 27. John chapter 14, verse 27. And the peace of God is upon you. I declare over your life right now. I release the anointing right now over your life. I release it, the peace of God, the passive understanding. You're going to get illumination. You're going to know how to handle that marriage. God, I tell you, take God's yoke upon you and God is going to show you, you ain't got to leave your husband. You ain't got to, you listen, you ain't got to kill nobody. You ain't got to, you ain't got to kill yourself. You are done with those pills. You are done with crack cocaine. You are done with with cussing, you are done with being mad at your mother-in-law, you're done with it because the peace of God, God gonna show you how to deal with it see, the light, you need illumination, the devil making you think it's bigger than what it is the devil wants you to think the problem is big so you won't know that you are the bigger one, greater is he that is in you, greater, greater the ER, the ER, the emergency is in you greater Greater, greater out of your belly shall flow. No woman from the gifts shall prosper. You are more than a conqueror. You don't come in to win. You come in as a winner, as a winner. You don't fight for victory. You fight from it. I'm victorious from the time I was born. Woo! See? Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. John chapter 14, verse 27. Watch. Here we go. Here, here's a mystery. Here's a mystery. You're just coming on. Hit that share button. Come on. Share it on your page. Watch this. Peace I leave with you. Peace I leave with you. Uh-oh. Peace I leave with you. You didn't get it. Peace I leave with you. When you think you're by yourself, he left something. You ever been, you ever been, been with somebody and they visit him? <clears throat> and they call you and say, I left my jacket. You know what? Keep it there for the next time I come back. Uh, you know what? I, I left I left so-and-so. I left my books. But keep them right there. Matter of fact, you can have them. God says, watch, I want you to know that I left you with something. I, 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 I didn't just go and sit on the right hand of the Father. I left you a piece of me, but the piece of me is called my peace. It's called my peace. This is my peace. The, this is my piece of me that I'm leaving with you, but it's my peace. It's the same thing that I was able to walk in trouble and stay lonely. I'm going to leave my peace. My peace I leave with you. I don't care what you've been through. You got a peace of God that's right there with you because he left it with you. Yes, the peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. 
not as the world give do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. Watch this. It didn't say, let not your heart be in trouble. Your heart will be in trouble, but it won't be troubled by what is in. Why? Because peace was left with it. Woo! Peace was left with it. It doesn't excuse the trouble you may be in, but it never lets the trouble be in you. Let not your heart be troubled by what you're in. You will be in some bad situations. But when you have this peace, you'll be able to be on the cross between two thieves and holler out, forgive them for they know not what they do. That's when the peace is with you. When you can look at a person that you know have your do not have your best interest, but how did you smile with them? How did you give them? How did you serve them food? How did you laugh with them? Cause God left me some peace. The last time I was in prayer, when I got up, He left me with some peace. I got some peace after I prayed. I got some peace after I cried about it. I got some peace after I talked to God about it. And now, watch this. I'm not afraid. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Why? Because I got peace. I got a peace of God. Wherever I go, peace follow me. I shall follow all men. When I'm following you, I'm following you with peace. <laughs> Woo! See that? Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world. When you are letting your trouble get the best of you. That means you left your peace. Don't let nothing interrupt the peace. This is what Jesus did on the, on the boat. When he said, let us cross over to the other side, the storm came. The boat was full of water. But Jesus mastered never allowing anything to interrupt the peace. This is why when he gets up, he speaks, he, he speaks to the wind. He, he rebukes it. And then he, and then he speaks to the waves. He says, peace be still. You got to tell your peace. Don't you leave because trouble is right here. Mm -hmm. Don't you leave because the children acting crazy. Don't you leave because my husband getting on my nerves. Don't you leave because my wife don't understand. You got to say, peace, be still. I can't make it without you. Be still. You got to know the authority you have to keep the peace there. Don't let the peace move. I can't make it through this if I let peace, if the peace run out the house, there's going to be trouble in the house. If the peace run out the marriage, it's going to be trouble in the marriage. If the peace run out the church, it's going to be trouble in the church. But peace, be still. Woo! Be still. Don't go nowhere. Oh, he said, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. <clears throat> Are you with me? Watch this. John chapter 16, verse 33. You just coming on, hit that share button. We're sowing where we're going. Watch this. Oh, this is the evidence of healing. Right? Watch this. John 16, verse 33. Here we go. And I and I I have said these things to you. You better remember what God told you. You better keep his word in your heart. I have said these things to you. That in me you may have peace. Woo! That in me. See, you're looking for peace from your bank account. You're looking for peace because there's gas in the car. You're looking for peace when they approve the loan in the house. He said, no, the peace is in me. You're looking for peace when your husband act right. Your, your, your wife act right. Your children lining up. No, I, I've said these things to you. I told you that you're looking for the wrong. Come unto me when you're all in and I will give you rest. Don't look for somebody to give you something that only God can give you. That peace of me, that is my peace. You, No one else can be that peace. That space was made for me. My wife called it the God space. There's a God space in all of us. There's a God void in all of us. The only God can sit in that room. He said, I didn't said these things. How many times God have to tell you? How many times God has to tell you? I told you that the peace was in me. You trying to get the peace of the money. You trying to get peace through the clothes. You trying to get peace through friendship. You trying to get peace through a relationship. I told you that the peace is in me. Yes, God. That in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. 
In the world, you will have tribulation. But take heart. I have overcome the world. Woo! I feel like shouting. Mm -hmm. He said, I, you, I, in the world, you're going to have trouble. But don't get it twisted. Don't you look at all the trouble in the world and let that mess up your peace. I, the world is tribulation, but I overcame the world. I overcame the world by the peace that I live in. And so if you want to overcome the world, you want to overcome tribulation, then get in me and I'll show you in me how to overcome the world. Because I overcome the world. So if you need to overcome your tribulation, all you got to do is get in me. You don't have to fight the world. You don't have to fight tribulation. I already won that battle. Get in me. Woo! How many times I got to say this to you? Feel like Bernie Mac. How many times I got to say this to you? <laughs> in the world, you have, have tribulations. <laughs> but take heart. I have overcome the world. I've said these things to you. Come on now. Real talk. Did you hear it? I feel the Lord moving in him. That peace. That peace. It's in him. It's in him, my sister. Tr trying to beat your husband up. It's in him. Quit trying to make all the money you can. It's in him. Quit trying to have 35 degrees. It's in him. John chapter 20, verse 19. That last verse, there's a settling. I, 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 I can feel the Lord disconnecting some things and reconnecting the right thing. Did you hear it? It's in him. That peace, it's not in nothing else. It's not in nothing else. John chapter 20, verse 19. Watch this. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for the fear of Jews. This is when Jesus had died and rose again. And they was afraid that just because they killed, they thought their perception had not become clear yet. They thought when they killed Jesus, they're going to come after us next. Watch this. On the evening of the first day, on the, on the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors were being locked where the disciples were for the fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said unto them, Peace be unto you. Jesus did not knock at the door. They did not open the doors. The doors was locked. Jesus literally walked through the walls and said, peace be unto you. When you understand that it means so much to God that you understand his peace, he will literally walk through doors that are locked for the fear that you may have of what's coming to you. Mm -hmm. You have a fear that you're going to lose your house. You have a fear you're going to lose your marriage. You have a fear. And fear has locked the doors. The real revelation is that fear will lock you in, in, in rooms. It will lock you in places. But God means so much. You mean so much to God that he will literally walk through the wall and say, do not be afraid. I don't care if they're after you. I don't care if people don't like you. Ever since you start preaching, ever since you start teaching, ever since you start following me, it looked like nobody for you now. Your family turned against you. Everybody, Don't worry about it. Peace be unto you. I know you are in these locked doors of fear, but fear don't hold back my peace. There's a word that I want to release on you. I want to release a word on you while you are in a locked place. Look like you are locked. Some of you right now, God has just walked through your walls of fear. You was afraid to get married. You're afraid to have a baby. You're afraid to start that business. You're afraid to start that ministry. You're afraid to tell the truth. But God walking in through your walls and said, peace. Peace be unto you. I hear you, Sister Elkins. You said, I have fear that things is going to work out. I know. Our greatest fear is, is, is the greatness that we carry. The devil takes experiences and make us be afraid to be who God says we are. We know we, we know we got it. That's why in the privacy of our home, we can preach like we can, like we don't, like it's 40,000 people there. But the minute the camera come on, we get nervous because he makes us afraid of our own greatness. He don't want you to believe in yourself. He wants you to think that you you can't say that I have it and God has blessed me. Yes, 
but God is coming with the peace. That be, why peace? Because peace is a sign of healing. The sign of healing that God has me. It's okay. It's okay. Even 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 if I die as a martyr, remember it's okay. See, I'm okay with what may happen to me. I got peace. When I lose, I win. And when I win, I win. Amen. So I got peace with it. See, this is what Job had. The Lord give me the Lord take me away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I got peace with it. Mm -hmm. I got peace with it. I ain't trying to keep it. I can't do this in my own strength. I can't fight all night long. I got to let vengeance be the Lord. That's vengeance of mine, said the Lord. I got to have peace. I'm going to sleep. I'm resting in God. Tomorrow we'll talk about that. I don't want to go no further because God has given us a lot today and I want us to digest that. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for the fear of Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, peace be unto you. Baby, you feel like praying? Okay, I'm going to have my wife pray today for us that you receive this. You receive, that you receive the peace of God. I want you to receive it. I don't want you to keep walking in confusion. I want you to be healed of everything that God has given you. Okay, I want you to understand Matthew 5 verse 9. Peacemakers, you got to be healed so you can begin to be a peacemaker. Watch this. Matthew 11, when you can come unto God and get rest. John 14, know that God left you with a piece of him. Really, if you, you are filled with the fullness of God, with all of him. That peace of God, that peace. That's what's going to help you. Some things you ain't got to talk about. Rest in God. I hear the Lord say, be silent. Rest in me. Quit trying to complain your way there. Silence your way there. When, pa when Pilate came to Jesus, the Bible said he didn't say a mumbling word. I don't need to defend myself. The peace of God will defend me. Okay? John 14, he gives me peace. John 16, he have overcome the world. I'm in him. He already is an overcomer. I am an overcomer because I am in him. John 20, peace be unto you. My wife is going to come and pray for us today that every form of bondages and fear be broken off your life and that you walk in the resting of God. Many of you are in situations that there is not an intellectual answer for your problem. The only thing you can do is rest in God. Sometimes we don't have a formula. This is what you need to do. This is what you need to go. No, sometimes we need to say just rest in the Lord. Just rest in God. Go to sleep. When you wake up, you'll see her. When you wake up, you'll be on the other side. When you wake up, you'll see a change in your husband and your kids. Learn to rest in God. Yes, God. Go ahead, sweetheart. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, bless in the you. name of Jesus, God, we bless you on today, God. And Lord, we enter your gates with thanksgiving. Father, we come before your courts with praise. And God, we enter into the blood of Jesus on today. Hallelujah. And Lord, we just want to thank you, Lord God. Bless Father, you. we just bless your name on today. Hallelujah. God, we give you the glory. Father, we ask in the Ooh, name of Jesus, Jesus God. Lord God, that you begin to stir up the gifts on today, God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you, Lord, for the word that has gone forth, oh God. And Lord, we glorify you in it on today, God. And Lord, we rest upon you, God. We rest yes, in yes, you on today, yes, God. Lord, Lord, we thank you for every instruction on today, God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And Father, we receive it with gladness, God. We thank you for the clarity of your word on today, God, as it has gone forth, God. We thank you, Lord, for the richness of your word, God, yes, the kindness of your word, God, in every spirit and every every ounce of love, God, Hallelujah. that was performed, God, that was spoken and released, oh God, yes, in the Lord, mighty name of Jesus. Jesus. And Father, we just give you glory on today, God. Oh, and Lord, we lift up your people on today, God, and we thank you, Lord, for Lord, transforming our way of thinking on today, yes, God. We yes, thank you, Lord, for yes, Lord, Lord releasing, yes, God, for breaking yokes on today, yes, God, Lord. for releasing the shackles off of our lives, oh yes, God, Lord. in the mighty name in of Jesus. Jesus. And God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the praise, Lord, God. Lord, as it begins to leave our lips on today, God, we thank you, Lord, that 
Lord God, Lord, that you receive it with gladness, God, that everything that we say, Lord, will be, Lord, able to conform us to your will and your way, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, and we bless you right now, God. And Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for, Lord, everything that has taken mm. place, oh God. We thank you, Lord, for the seen and the unseen, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, that even now, God, that as our discernment is sharpened, oh God. Mm. Uh, Lord, hallelujah. we bless you right now, God, yes, that Lord. nothing is hidden from us, oh God. Yes, Lord. In the mighty name in of Jesus, Jesus, God, we thank you, Lord, for the lens have been changed, oh God. Yes, Lord. That we may detect the, detect the enemy from afar off, oh God. Lord, In the Lord. mighty name of Jesus, God, and we bless you right now, God. Bless we you. give you glory, God, even as we repent in your presence, Lord God. Lord, we ask, Lord God, that you forgive us, Lord God, for every unclean thing, God, wow. everything that is not, not of you, okay. God. Every spirit, Lord God, that, that we have a allowed to rule us, oh God, yes, in the Lord. mighty yes, name of Lord. Jesus, yes, God, Lord. we release it on today, yeah, God, Lord and Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we have the opportunity yes, to walk in your glory on today, God, yes, in the mighty name of Jesus, Hallelujah. God, we bless you, Lord, Hallelujah. we thank you right now, God, Hallelujah. for those things, Lord, that has hindered us, God, that they have mm. been removed on today, God, yes, Lord. in the name of Jesus, in the name God, of Jesus. Lord, that we can go forth with boldness and authority on today, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, and we bless you, Lord, bless and God, we thank you, Lord, for the spirit of fear, Lord, God, being broken up of us, God. In thank the you, name Lord. Of Jesus, you broke God. It. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, God. We thank you for the move of oh. your spirit on today, God. Hallelujah. We thank you for the infilling of your spirit on today, God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, God. We thank you for transformation Hallelujah. on today, God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, Hallelujah. Lord, we bless you, God. And Lord, we thank you right now, God, that even the things that, Lord God, Lord, that we have Lord, that we have problems with, God, the things that we lack understanding in, God. We thank you, Lord, for <coughs> just enlightening mm. us on today, God, illuminating us on today, God, in the name of Jesus, God. And mm. we bless you, Lord, that we are beginning to move out of our will, God, and, Lord, walk in your will on today, God. In the name of Jesus, Jesus. God, we glorify you. Hallelujah, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Jesus. And we bless your name, God. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing, God. Even though we don't understand it, God, we receive it on today, God, in yes, the name Lord, of Jesus, Jesus. God. Thank you, Lord. And, Lord, Lord, for each and every one, Lord God, that have the desire, Lord, to, to know you, Lord God. Lord, I thank you as I stand in agreement with them on God, that, Lord God, that your will will be done in their lives, God. I ask you to stir oh, them up on Lord. today like never before, Lord Jesus. God, I thank you for what you're doing, God. I thank you for this ministry, Lord God. I thank you for each and every one, Lord mm. God, that has fellowship with us, oh, Lord God. Lord. In the name of Jesus, God, and we bless you right now, God. We thank you for new things, God, for new doors, Lord God, for friends fresh revelation for fresh rim yes, oh God. Yes, in the mighty name Lord of Jesus, Jesus, God, we thank you for transforming us on today, God. Lord, for quickening our spirit, Lord God. For call those things, Lord God, that have died within us, Lord. We Hallelujah. thank you for calling life back to them on today, God. Yes, Lord. In the mighty in name of Jesus, Jesus, Lord, and we bless you, God. Bless we honor your word bless and your name on today, God. Bless and Lord, let us not, Lord God, Lord, continue to do the things that are not like you, Lord. But Lord, let us be conscious, mm. oh God, that we see that you, that we stand in your presence, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, and we bless you on today, God, and we give you the glory, Lord God, and we honor your name on today, Lord, in the mighty name, name of Jesus, Jesus, God, and we lift up the children, Lord God, we lift up the husbands, we lift up the wives, God, yes, we Lord. lift up relationships on today, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, and we bless you, Lord, and we give you glory on today, God, we give you praise on today, God, and Lord, we thank you, Lord, for what you're doing, Lord, in this season, God, and we lift up the man of God on today, God. And Lord, I just thank you for him on today, God. And God, I ask you, Lord God, to continue to hedge, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, we bless you for him on today, God. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the strength and the endurance on today, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we bless you, God. I honor you for him on today, Lord, in the name of Jesus, God. And Lord, I thank you, Lord, that, Lord, as you... Lord, elevate him, God. Lord, God, we thank you that the spirit of humility continues to rest on him, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, and we bless you right now, God. And we thank you, Lord, for just doing it all, God. We thank you, Lord, for, for your way being enlightened in our lives on today, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, and we give you all the glory. Father, we give you the praise in the name of Jesus, Lord. Yes, Lord. And we receive it all by faith on today, God. Yes, Lord. And Lord, we say yes and amen to your will and your amen. way in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless God. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God bless you. God Thank bless you. you. Jesus. Let the peace of God go with you and be with you. Thank you, Lord. God is releasing a peace that's breaking you out of all doors of fear. She pray that Thank prayer you, that when the peace of God comes, it's going to break you out of the doors of fear. For many of you, yes, you're God. going to be released into great positioning in God. 
because the peace, the enemy tried to rob you of the peace that kept you in those closed yes, doors. God. See, Jesus. so Jesus had to come and walk through those doors to show you, you have an assignment. I'm gone now. I'm, I'm only going to be here 40 more days, yes, 40 Lord. more days, but you have an assignment on your life. And a lot of times you couldn't do your assignment because fear tried to lock you in a place, but the peace of God will come in and he spoke this. And now what you're going to do, you're going to come out of these four walls. You're going to come out of these legalistic things that keep you in from fear. And you're going to, the peace of God is going to be with you and you're going to speak peace on other people. Now you're going to walk through doors that people thought they can lock you out of. Fear thought I'm going to keep you out of. You can do it, okay? So God bless you. Love you. Yes, Watch this over and over again. Hit that share button. Share this on your page, okay? And tell people about it. And we'll see you tomorrow on part two, the evidence of healing. God bless you. Love you. Walk in God's favor. Yes, God.